You're here tonight for choosing WordPress themes. Uh, this is WordPress St. Petersburg. I am Jim True. I am the support lead and community manager at the Pods Framework. Uh, our website for Pods, we are a custom content development framework for WordPress. Uh, let you manage it all in one place. Our website is pods.io. We have a Twitter there. My website is jimtrue.com, and my Twitter is at jimtrue. Uh, all these slides will be available tomorrow, at, possibly tonight, on both the Meetup, our website, and on Facebook group. Uh, this is WordPress St. Petersburg. We meet here on the first and third Thursdays, monthly, uh, at the Tech Garage. Our meetup is at meetup.com, WordPress St. Petersburg. It should also show up in your WordPress dashboard. If you've got WordPress set up, if you've got your dashboard set up for near, nearby events set up for St. Petersburg, you'll see us in there as well. Our website is tampabaywp.org. Uh, we have a Slack chat, we have a Facebook group, we have all the meetups listed on there. We're part of a network of six different meetup groups that meet throughout Tampa Bay. I'm probably the most active. We also have one in Newport Ritchie that's somewhat active, and there's one in Tampa, oh, sorry, Newport, New Tampa that's trying to be more active, but they're having problems looking for hosting space. So, All of our prior events are listed on the website. All of our prior videos and slides are all on that website. So it's a good place to go as your hub for WordPress in Tampa Bay. Our upcoming meetups and events is WordCamp Jacksonville is this weekend. It is at, uh, well, it's in Jacksonville. They still have tickets available. It is on the 7th and the 8th. Uh, WordCamp Atlanta is next weekend. Um, they also still have tickets available. The only Wi-Fi that's working today is, this, is the first one, the StarTech Guest. So. If you can get in, it's the Innovate Tampa Bay is the password, and I think there's one more sign, but if you need it, there's one there on the back. Uh, our next WordPress meetup here on the 19th is our Ask Us Anything. It's a crowdsourcing WordPress project and support workshop. Basically what we do is you all come in with questions you may have, and we kind of open it up to the floor. You know, every one person asks a question, we try to answer it, and then we go to the next person, and we try to get everybody covered in that kind of a thing. Uh, and that'll be April 19th here at 6.30 p.m. Elaine will be running it that night. I will be in, in Naples, Florida, doing another talk down there. Uh, and in May, uh, Travis Lopez is going to come up from or come down from Newport Ritchie, and we're going to talk about Gutenberg and what it means to us. What kind of a mess it means to us or what kind of a good thing it means to us. We don't know yet. So that's going to be that. We are looking for speakers. If you, you actually can learn some about something when you teach. So it's actually a good thing to teach something. So if you actually understand stuff about WordPress and you feel like it's something that you want to talk about, approach us to talk about it. And sometimes that could be as simple as, you know, your top 500 plugins or your top 50 plugins. And you come in and say, you know what, we're going to, you know, put out a meetup meet group that says uh, next month, bring in what plugin you like best and why. And we'll just go through the entire room and like everyone stood up and do it. And that can be a meetup. It doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, getting over your fears of public yeah. speaking is much, oh, yes. Speakers for where? Here, meetups, yeah, meetups. It could be, if you want Newport Ritchie or I'm sorry, and up there too by you, there too, it's fine. You know, if, but if you want to meet someplace else than so here. You're building a, a speaker pool Yes. all of the WordPress meetups yes. here and now. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like Chris Jenkins, he wants to do his, but he wants to do them on Wednesday nights because he can't do Thursday nights because he does the Entrepreneur Social Club on Thursday nights. So he's going to do a meetup at his space in Symphony on Wednesday nights coming up, and I gave him access to the calendar. That's pretty much it. If you can find a space to do a host and you want to do a meetup and you want to do kind of a, a get-together, if you want to do a six-person get-together, let's all figure out how to use WordPress thing, you can do that. You just have to have a space, and you just got to put it on the calendar. That's all it takes. But if you want to meet here, you got to go through me only because I'm the contact for Tech Garage. That's all. Yeah, I don't. I'm happy to let anybody talk. Believe me, because I can't do all of the classes. It takes a lot of work to put these things together, um, you know, on a regular basis. But if you want to talk one month, our regular scheduled talks are always the first of the month. Our second scheduled talk on the third of the month is a open conversation like. Uh, project thing. So it is fun to talk, by the way. If you ever want to get used to doing public speaking and you don't do it, get a chance to do it a lot, ask to do one of these. 
it's a great chance to get comfortable with it. Our website has a form for speakers. It's called a call for speakers, and just fill it out. Okay, events here at the Tech Garage. This is a co-working space open during the week. They have like a <coughs> monthly fee um, to use it. But they have a Tech Talk Entrepreneur Program over in Tampa on April 10th. There's a flyer up at the front. Their Catalyst Series is called From Innovator to Entrepreneur. It's on the morning of the 19th, and that's also here. Okay, let's get started with the actual talk. What is the theme anyway? Yes? Uh, what is it? It's a microphone to my tail. Oh, okay, sure. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, bald man. <laughs> Can you hear me better now? Much. All right, cool. Okay. So what is a theme anyway? A basic WordPress theme is two files, index.php and styles.css. That's it. Your index.php handles your content. That means it makes a round trip to the database, pulls the content out of the database, and depending on what you're doing, what's the URL on your website, it presents it in a nicely formatted semantic bit of HTML on the page. It does the header, the menu, the content, the sidebar, and the footer. Just lays it out, nice little HTML. Your style CSS handles display. It's a style sheet. It makes the header look pretty, it positions the menu, it recognizes what kind of device you're browsing on, and displays the content appropriately. It handles all your font choices, colors, hyperlinks, and image displays. It does what it needs to do to make your site look good, or it could make your site look hideous, depending on who designed it. So, the theme files help modularize your content. So like these extra little files here, the, if you look in the theme, you might see a header PHP, a sidebar.php, and a footer.php. Those actually do the header portion, header, sidebar does the sidebar, and footer does the footer. You actually call those in your index.php using get header, calls header.php, get sidebar, calls sidebar.php, and get footer does footer.php. A lot of this is if like you're ever looking in your theme files, you're going, what in the hell does all this mean? If you look in the file, this is kind of meant to give you kind of like an idea. You don't have to know PHP to understand this, but it never hurts to look at the theme files occasionally and try to get an idea of it. The big thing is that little guy right there, the loop, because what is the loop? You should be able to, if you're looking in a theme file and you're modifying it, you should be able to recognize what that is, because that is what outputs your content. The if have post, while have post, the post, the content, and while in this. This line right there is what most of your plugins work against. It's what most of your themes work against. If you're looking at a search screen and you type in, you know, searching for WordPress in the little search box, it makes a trip to the database and it goes and finds out what all the stuff on your website is that's, you know, that has the word WordPress in it. And it comes back and it says, okay, I'm going to create a list of posts that all have WordPress in them. That list of posts is the content. Everything else is your design, is your header, the menu, the sidebar, the footer. But this is your actual content for your website. Where do these parts come from? Well, <clears throat> this is what I just told you. Your posts your blog posts, your, you know, the posts on your website, your pages, post pages, your custom post types if you have any, your taxonomies, don't think about that one right now, but it's basically like your categories, your tags, uh, if you've got a custom post type that you could have some custom taxonomies, your WordPress products, your WordPress product categories, your, uh, I'm trying to think of another site that would have, like a portfolio gallery, your portfolios, all of that goes there. It comes out in your content. Your search results. If you type in a bad website address and you get a 404 error and it says, oh, I couldn't find that page, that goes in your content. All of those kind of things, those little guys right there, go to content. And that's what controls them. These other parts, your menus go here. You know, if you go into your appearance menus, create a menu for your website, it goes right to that section right there. Your widgets goes in sidebar and also in footer because, you know, you can have widgets all over the place depending on who designed your theme. 
your header usually is your site-wide settings. It's things like your logo, your uh, background header, stuff like that. Any of the stuff that's in, uh, well, they don't have it there, but it's like appearance customizer and header, and also general, uh, settings general, because that's where your blog name and your stuff like that. All I'm doing by this is because I, everyone comes in, they start asking about themes, but they don't know what themes do. And that's primarily what this little piece is doing. This is all going to be on the web too, but basically I want to give you an idea that what a theme controls, because a lot of people don't get that, um, and where those things in your theme come from. So does that make sense? Okay. Themes can also define multiple menu areas. Like, you know, when you've got like a menu at the very top and you also have another different menu down on the bottom, maybe your theme has like a social links menu to create like your social connections and stuff. Your theme can also define different widget areas. Like they'll have the one on the right sidebar, they'll have several different little footer widgets. They'll also have maybe like the one in your top uh, area for like ads and stuff. And all of those are defined by your theme. Your theme can also define different page and post templates for different kind of content. Like uh, if you're, you're running a, Word, a WooCommerce site and you bought a theme that actually handles like product displays and stuff, it may have a specific theme files to do those kind of things. Uh, it can also do uh, have multiple ways to apply content and images to your site on a site-wide basis. So that's typically when you go into Customizer and you can add very specific settings for your theme. All of that stuff is defined in your theme. So what does the Styles DCSS do? It's what makes the site go from this to that to that or that. All the exact same content. Not a single bit of content changed there. All I did was just change the style CSS. All I did was change the theme itself. Exact same content, completely different look, using the exact same menu. Every one of those is the exact same menu and the same widgets, the same content, etc. It's important to understand that your theme is really primarily about controlling how your content gets on the site and controlling how it looks. You know, move this around because I'm over there a lot. Okay. What's in a style CSS? It contains the actual theme name and the details. It's like, uh, this, is the, this is the default theme from WordPress, the 2017. It includes the name, the URL, uh, description. It's got a lot more stuff in there, but that's the primary piece that makes it visible to WordPress as a theme. It also contains the actual cascading style sheet that creates the styles for the website. We're not going to go deep into this. This is basically setting up the default typography for 2017. So what's a child theme? Because you get this asked a lot. Uh, basically, if you've got a website and you've actually gone in and you bought a theme or you downloaded a theme off the repo and you modified it. You went in and you changed all the CSS and maybe you changed some of the files and you made little modifications all through the back end, you know, through the, the actual text files. And you did it on the actual theme and then it came out with a new version. If you did it in that particular theme, that's going to overwrite everything you just did. So if you take, like if I, 2017, if I went into 2017 and I edited all the CSS, I took the style CSS file sheet and changed all the fonts, I changed everything else, but I did it in the text files. I changed the files. And then I get a new update from WordPress, it's gonna blow away everything I did. So you make a child theme. And the child theme is this simple. At the bare minimum, it's a styles.css with that. Theme name, Jim's theme, template 2017. It tells it where it comes from. But there's an easier way to do this. These are all going to be on the website, so you don't have to make notes. Uh, it'll make your life easier, <laughs> unless you want to you know, write them down. There's a plugin called Child Theme Configurator. Basically, <coughs> if you install this plugin, you can take a theme, click a button, and it will create a child theme for you. And you can go from that child theme configurator and make all your changes there. It'll make your life a little easier. Uh, I've never used it, unfortunately, so I cannot talk much about it. But I've had several people already tell me that's that. That's like your test and dev? Um, not really, no. It's like a child theme is to make your own version of the theme so that when it gets updated by the theme developer, it doesn't blow away the modifications you made to it. So like if you want to start with like Generate Press or like a Genesis framework, Genesis frameworks, all of their themes are based on the Genesis framework and everything you do is a child theme. The only way to work in Genesis is in a child theme. And if you want to do anything with any of the WordPress themes, you absolutely have to use a child theme or you're going to break 
it's going to get broken when uh, the next version of WordPress comes out and they change the main theme. So, so the next, yes, go ahead. I have a question on the uh, job. Yeah. Where would we find them if they're Right okay, you find them, but in their own their own directory. So basically, if you look at, uh, we'll go back. <coughs> Whatever you name the theme, you put that file inside its own little directory, and then you'll be inside that directory. So like if you have a theme, a child theme called Stacy, and it's actually when you look at, let me see. Yeah, give me a second. So you have to upload it to the, the themes of parents' themes? Yes. As a separate theme. And you would have the, the parent theme, which is yours, and then you would have a child theme as, as a separate theme. So that, that's a step that's missing from what we were just discussing. So where does the child theme come from? Because you either make one, you either make one, someone has made it for you, or you have made it with a child theme configurator. Is it a premium theme? You can get it from wherever you buy it from. No, let's just take this example that you're using from 17. Yeah. Okay, so. You have to make that child thing. I don't know. That, uh, you, you, make, you make a new text file. Yeah. Right? And then you create a directory, typically with your uh, FTP, and you put it in there. And Stacy, I mean, I'm not going to go deep into this because this is not a thing about building child themes. That's an entire hour on its own. It is. A I mean, child theme is important for Genesis. Genesis child themes, you buy the child theme and then you basically install it. Most of the time, if you're going to design your own child theme, you're going to use a child theme configurator or you're going to go to that link at the very bottom of that child theme page. That's on WordPress.org. It's, yeah. The Theme Developer's Handbook has a whole ridiculous, they've made it much more complicated to do child themes. That's why I pushed you to the child theme configurator because it is a pain in the ass now. Because now you cannot do import CSS, you have to actually enqueue it in a functions.php file. They've added all of these extra steps to make child themes a little more complicated to do. At their basic sense though, it's one file. It's a styles.css that has the template name of the theme that you're copying from. You create a folder and you drop that file in it. And that's it. So and then you and then you modify this. And then the next thing you go over and look at if you pick a theme and there's a child theme you can pick Yeah. Yeah, Genesis has an entire shopping I mean they have an entire sh uh, marketplace of child themes and you buy those, you download them, you upload them, but they're all based on the Genesis theme. Does that make sense? No? Okay. <laughs> no, I, I purchased premium themes. Yeah, from yeah. Very few premium themes are actually child themes. They are premium no, themes. Right, yeah. No, I mean they're premium because. Does the child I part mean that it's a backup? You're not no, child means that it's based on the parent theme. That means that it takes gonna... most of its design and all of its functionality from the parent theme. That's what a child theme means. Is it's, we're not going to mess up the parent code. Right. You're not touching the parent code. So, All you're doing is modifying. You can't get away from when you buy it, you by virtue of that now have a child. You have a child of it. So it's like basically if you get rid of the parent, the child's going to break. And it's, it's, you purchased that web design kit. It's called a child. Yeah. That's kind of how it works. So it's just basically in WordPress, if you're going to modify an existing production theme or a premium theme or a theme by another developer, right. if you want to modify one and actually modify it style sheets, add theme files, you want to do that in a child theme. <clears throat> and that's the, the configurator, honestly, is probably the easiest way to do it because, like I said, this little link right there at the bottom talks exactly how to configure a child theme. And it's not easy anymore. But when you go to the website and you were just. Yeah, John. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you go to the website and you're on that menu and you went to appearances and you pick a theme and you're editing a theme, are you in essence you're editing the production? No, you're editing the production theme. Okay. So if you go into those files and that appearances editor yeah. and you start editing that theme, you're at editing the production theme. At that point, that's not a child, unless you've made a child of so that. Is there theme. a problem with doing that? Yeah, because if that and site gets updated, if update comes out, you get wiped. Yeah. Exactly. You mentioned Genesis, but gen in Genesis you have the framework, which you typically don't. Know. It's a theme. And then, <laughs> and then you buy typically, or you yeah. can create your own, a child theme, mm -hmm. which is the theme that you're running on your website. Right. But that 
also can get updated since you're buying it from a vendor. Yes. So you really, in that case, you'd be creating a, a grandchild. grandchild theme. Yeah. Right? Which yeah. The grandchild calls the child, <laughs> the child calls the parent. And, you, know, you kill off the child. If you care off the parent, you you're going to kill the child and the pit grandchild. Yeah. In the lowest level one that you create, yeah. not something that someone else created. Because that's what if you, you get let's say, the sake of argument, work. plan on selling one thing, and you don't plan on modifying the code? Can you go native with that parent code? No. What? If you take, I mean, if it's your theme, if you designed it, if yeah. you went to, if you went to like underscores.me or one of the theme developer frameworks and got a base <clears throat> WordPress theme, and you built it from the ground up and it's yours, mm -hmm. you can sell that to someone else, yes. But if you buy a Genesis framework and then you sell and you modify the Genesis framework itself or Genesis child theme itself and sell it to someone, it's going to get blown away when that theme gets updated. That's what child themes are about. Hey, Brenda, yeah, go ahead. This is a very basic question to the thing it's very, very basic. But I had some problems with my theme, and I got help from the WordPress, and they added some code to fix their problem. So is what you're saying that when I update the next time, all that code is going to disappear? Depends on if they had you create a child theme or not, or if you were in a child theme. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah. So then we'll go completely. Thanks. <laughs> If you don't have your answers at the end of the... We're going to have a question and answer section. I mean, we're getting there very quickly. So I'd, I'd kind of like to get through the slide portion so we can move on. Because we're otherwise, we're going to get derailed and we're not going to move to questions and points. So. <laughs> okay. Because this stuff is... You don't have to know a lot of this. But the biggest thing is, if you're going to make modifications to a premium theme, child theme at first. Make your modifications to the child theme. Don't make the modifications to the premium theme. Okay. And that is probably the easiest way to do that, because all it does is it creates your child theme from you, from your installed theme. It names it whatever you want to name it. It creates the directory file. It creates the files that you're going to need to modify. OK? And it's child theme configurator. All right. So themes versus plugins. Uh, themes handle your design, <coughs> your layout, the responsiveness of the site, like if it goes mobile, tablet, what have you. Uh, handles the content options. Handles your images and fronts. It's your front end. Plugins primarily are building like content types, taxonomies, functionality, like WooCommerce, e-commerce stuff. Uh, might be controlling access and control, like user access management. Might be doing system interaction. And system, and I mean system interaction as in like communicating to other systems, like MailChimp and stuff like that. Those are all back end. You don't want your theme to do anything on that other side because there's a reason that WordPress has themes and plugins and they keep them separate. If all of your functionality of your site is driven by your theme and your theme developer goes away, you break your entire site. Or if you suddenly get tired of your design and you want to change your design and you suddenly realize that all of your functionality of your site is driven by your theme, you're screwed because you can't change your design unless you modify the theme itself. So it's a big thing to look at is like making sure that your themes don't have too much plug-in type work in them. And I'm not talking about like slideshows or things like that or galleries or portfolios and stuff. I'm, you know, that's, that's okay. But you've got to constantly keep looking at when you're looking at buying a theme, you're either making a purchase and like if you buy a directory theme and it has like an entire, you know, it handles like a business directory and it does SEO stuff specifically for that. You're making a purchase for that from now on because all of the functionality of that theme is built into that particular theme. The custom post types, the arrangement, the theme files that handle the directory. If you're buying a, uh, a gym theme that handles like event management and scheduling and stuff like that, and that's all built into the gym theme and somebody's thrown it up and they're from India and they popped it on Theme Forest and then they're gone two months later. You're screwed because all of the functionality of your website is in that theme. Uh, real estate is another really good example of this, where people throw up the MLS sites all the time and stuff like that. Now, they have to communicate with MLS systems. I totally understand that. But the theme shouldn't be the thing driving that connection. You should be using an MLS plugin that drives the real estate connection, not all the design. And then the design works with that plugin to create the, the, out the look. So, 
Where would a shopping cart fall into that? A uh, shopping cart's fine because a shopping cart is basically just designing the look of the shopping cart. That's in the theme. No, WooCommerce controls the shopping cart. Your e-commerce plugin controls the shopping cart. <clears throat> All the theme should be doing is how it looks. Okay. So, and what I'm talking about basically is form versus function. And you really do want to look at that when you're evaluating a theme <clears throat> that you're not crossing the line there. So this is my five-point checklist. This may not be your five-point checklist. But this is what I think about when I decide if I'm going to say yes or no to a theme. Okay? Does it have a free or a trial version? And that's primarily so you're not going to have to go back to them and ask for a refund if it's not what you want. You want to be able to test something and on your host or on your local machine and see if it's going to work the way you want it to. Um, is it on the WordPress.org theme repository? A free version. doesn't have to be the big premium version, but it needs to at least have some version that's on the WordPress.org theme repository. The reason this is important to me is because then I know it's coded to WordPress standards. I know it's coded the way that WordPress, WordPress theme uh, checklist people, they, they have a rigorous testing routine when a theme gets submitted to them. They go through everything to make sure it's, it's always going to work. And it's going to work with their plugins, and it's going to work the way that WordPress expects it to. That's why I won't buy a theme unless it has a free version on the, on the repo. And that's just me, again. But that's why, because I know the testing standards they go through. If I change themes, will my website still be functional? Is it going to break my site? If I suddenly have built an entire theme and I've you know, got all my content in and I've made it look all nice and pretty and I've got the things in the menu looking the way I want and I suddenly have to change themes and all of a sudden my entire page is filled with short codes. That's broken my site. And that's not, that's not good for me. If I've built an entire directory website and I've used a directory plugin and, you know, a directory theme and I change themes because I want a different theme. I, you know, it's this, this particular directory theme isn't responsive. <clears throat> or it doesn't support Google's new, I don't know, what, you know, Google constantly puts out new little specifications and standards. It doesn't support that anymore. Uh, if I change it and my directory's gone, I'm pissed. <laughs> because if that theme has custom post types built into it, if it has, you know, this entire, like, I don't know, a portfolio gallery, and I switch themes, and my portfolio gallery is gone, I'm going to be annoyed because it was in my theme. So that's what I mean. That's my biggest one. If I change themes, is my website still functional? Yeah. Do you want to be able to test that in the free trial that you're talking about? So go into the free trial and um, see if you What can I do, is I t how I <coughs> test it, is I go into uh, the customizers, appearance theme, change <coughs> themes, do a live preview. I'll show you. Uh, it's real easy to check. <laughs> and you know, and it's, and it's like, it's my, it's my big no go on that one. Okay, does it focus on front-end layout or does it try to be a Swiss Army knife? That's a big one. Uh, I don't want a theme that's a Swiss Army knife. I don't need my theme to do plug-in work. I don't need my theme to build custom post types. I don't need my theme to handle my MailChimp integration. I don't need my theme to do all my SEO integration because WordPress does that or Yoast does that better. I don't want to buy my theme, one theme that tries to do everything because if it tries to do everything, something's going to break. It's trying to do too much. And that's why I won't go that direction. Uh, does it have good support? This is a huge one. This is a gigantic one. Can you get an answer from the theme developer in a day or two? You know, or during business hours? Do they have a forum? on WordPress.org and do they, are they responsive to it? Uh, do they have a website that you can go to to contact them and are they responsive to it? Are they, do they make updates on a regular basis? Do they update when WordPress updates? That's, that's that big question. Okay, we're gonna talk about Divi and why I won't ever use Divi. This is me, not you. <laughs> Again, this is my rules. Uh, it's a theme with front-end editing and layout. It's, an, it's a fantastic theme. It has a huge visual drag-and-drop builder. It's like you can make pretty much anything you want to make with Divi. Quite true. It has multiple possibilities in design. It has pricing tables. It has carousels. It has uh, video 
showing things that has like social things and testimonials and all manner of amazing stuff. Galleries, portfolios, you can do anything in the world with Divi. And according to their website, they are the most popular premium WordPress theme in the world. And that was recent. <laughs> Does it have a free or trial? Believe it or not, it does. But this free trial is on a session on their hosting server. That means you can't test it on your server. And I guarantee you right now, if you try to buy Divi and put it on GoDaddy, it's going to break. Because the resource requirements of Divi are astronomical. It takes a lot to do what Divi does. And I guarantee you, on shared hosting, you're not going to get what you need to do it. And that's the biggest thing I hear from everybody. When they use Divi and they try to run it on GoDaddy, it doesn't work. Because they're on shared hosting with other shared people, and it's just not going to do it. So, Is it on the WordPress repo? No. Nope. There is not a version of Divi at all on the WordPress repo. The reason it's not on the WordPress repo is because they don't code to WordPress standards at all. They don't obey the WordPress theme hierarchy, which is huge. That means that most of your plugins have to be modified to work with Divi. They don't work natively, or you've got to do a short code and cut and paste a short code into this box. And then that means your client has to cut and paste a short code into this box. So if you're selling a Divi theme, you're stuck with it, or you're going to be stuck with maintaining it for your client. It's a big point. Is it functional if I switch themes? This is our pods, Friends of Pod site. I built it in Divi in less than two hours. It's a beautiful site, it's gorgeous. Pricing table, the whole bit. I go into the theme customizer and I switch themes to 2017 or 2015, and this is what I get. Pages and pages and pages of shortcodes, nested shortcodes, and hideous, unbelievably ugly text. That's what's in my content box. That's what's on my front end of my website when I flip it to another theme. That is horrendously broken. No. Or nope. <laughs> That's why I won't use it. Uh, does it focus on front end and layout? Oh yeah. It's ridiculously powerful. You can do everything on the front end. You can have a page right there and you like you can click on this little header portion or this little header portion and you'll get like a little control panel and it pops up this little thing here and you can like do all kind of manner of stuff. It's unbelievably powerful. It's ridiculously powerful as a front end editor. Well, they're it's, using Visual Composer, aren't they? No, they're using their own. They're not using Visual Composer. They're using Divi Builder. So uh, which is a plugin which runs on its own, but it's still throwing ridiculous chunks of short code in your content. So does Visual Composer. So does Site Composer. All three of those. Visual Composer, my biggest issue with that one was WP Bakery sold it. And when they sold it, you can have a theme over here running Visual Composer. They'll rebrand it as their composer. You'll have this theme over here that runs Visual Composer. They'll rebrand it as their composer. No one controls the code and it's all over the place. You can't update it purchase Yeah, exactly. So support. They have amazing support. They have excellent documentation. They have a, if you buy the premium Divi product, they have a ticket system. So you can get very good support responses from them. They have a huge community of Divi users, Divi developers, <coughs> Divi designers. Uh, they have Divi conventions. They have Divi meet camp meetups, that whole bit. It's like Divi, I'm not trying to slam the whole concept, but I won't use it. Because once you go that direction, you can't go anywhere else. If you choose Divi as your base theme, that means you are stuck with Divi for the rest of your life. And that's a decision you have to make. That also means that if you're selling sites to clients, your clients cannot make the updates to their site themselves. They will break it. They will break your site if they do their content because they have to go through that whole visual editor thing. And I don't think you want to train them how to do that. So that's the problem with that concept. That means you're going to be on the hook for performing all maintenance for your clients. And you're going to be on the hook for staying with Divi for the rest of your life if you choose that. <coughs> it's a lifetime commitment. Do you want to marry Divi? Okay. Genesis from Studio Press. The Genesis framework is based on WordPress standards. But I noticed, which quite surprised me, 
when I searched the WordPress website recently, Genesis is no longer listed. Genesis used to be listed under premium themes, and it's no longer listed on WordPress.org's website anymore. That's interesting. So anyway, but it is based on WordPress standards. It works with the, it has a theme hierarchy that works and flows the proper way. Uh, it has, it basically is a, uh, looking for a thing, you got it. <laughs> they have a child theme marketplace. Basically they have the Genesis framework, which creates the framework Genesis theme, creates the menu areas, creates the widget areas, stuff like that. And then they have an entire marketplace of themes that modify on top of that. They're all based on Genesis, but they are child themes. You buy the Genesis framework, and then you buy the child theme. The child theme updates, Genesis updates, you have to make updates. So they even tell you when you buy, like, buy a child theme, you have to make your own child theme if you're going to modify this, because if you don't, it's going to break when we update. So they all... They push, if you go into the whole Genesis framework concept, they're going to keep pushing child theme, child theme, child theme. You're going to be running grandchildren. So, but it's not a bad thing. Uh, they have very beautiful, responsive turnkey designs. Uh, they have a huge developer network. Genesis developers are as well known as WordPress developers because a lot of WordPress developers, when they first get started doing theme design, use Genesis as their base framework. Does it have a freer trial? Nope. There is not a single free version. That little thing down there, the little live demo, that is a, that's just like looking at a theme on a shop demo. You can't make modifications to it. You can't look at the back end, nothing. So they don't have a free version. Their base version is 60 bucks. You're making a $60, uh, what do you call it? You're making a $60 commitment without being able to actually test it or play with it. So is it on the repo? No, nope. it's not even listed. If I search for Genesis, it says no themes found. Different search. <laughs> so it doesn't have anything on there. If I switch themes, is it still functional? Yeah, definitely. If I use, because it, it's based on WordPress theme or WordPress standards, that means it's not messing up your content. It's not throwing short codes in there. It's uh, you change the theme pop it to a different website or to a different theme, it's still going to work just fine. Uh, it focuses primarily on front end and layout. They have a lot of widgets and short codes, mostly page layouts, primarily. Uh, the Rainmaker platform, which is something based on Genesis, is something for MLS marketing and some of the other stuff like that. So that goes a little bit beyond what a regular theme would do. But yeah, primarily it focuses on front end layout. Now, do they have good support? Almost all of their real support is behind a paywall. Their Slack, you have to have bought the Genesis framework to get into their Slack chat. If you want to look at their documentation, if you want to look at their support ticket, you know, their support form or anything like that, you've had to buy the Genesis framework. Uh, most of the folks out there that have any articles on Genesis want you to pay to look at their articles. There's a big guy that everyone points you to. I can't think of his name right now. But if I go and look at his website, I get to see 10%, and then the other 90% I need to pay to see the rest of it. And he's the most well-known Genesis documentarian out there that explains how to do all this stuff with Genesis. That's a problem to me. I, yeah, I can go on lynda.com, and I can look at Genesis tutorials, but I've watched Kerry Dill's Genesis tutorial. I've watched several Genesis tutorials on uh, lynda.com and almost every single one of them is hunting and pecking through the files for Genesis to find what they're looking for. It's not that well documented. And that's just me again. All their theme customization, every single bit of their theme customization, except for style sheets, is through hooks and action filters. So you have to know PHP to customize their theme. So to me, no. That's, that's mine. <laughs> So generate press. Now this one is a very customizable, responsive, and flexible theme. It has a new, the version they just dropped this week added a site library, which I consider different from a child theme thing because what their site library is, is they've had some of their generate press developers and designers create websites based on generate press. But they've also created like beaver builder layouts and they've created 
contact forms and they've created custom post types and they've created all this other stuff. So actual plugins are installed like Yoast and some of these other ones. Uh, your contact form plugin will be installed. Some other kind of form, you know, Beaver Builder might be installed. The theme is Generate Press. All the customizations is done by that layout person. And then you get, like you'd want to say, like they have like a, a food bloggers website and you pay 10 bucks, or I think that one actually may be free. You click site library, it boom, knocks the menu, the content, the design, the plugins, everything for you on your website that is a food bloggers website and you can get started tomorrow. And it's based on generate press, so you can still change your theme if you want to. But all the base content, all the thing that drives it is actually included in the site library. I thought that was kind of cool because they make it very specifically that these are well-designed sites that you can customize. But they are definitely, the entire content is coming down. So it's kind of nice. Uh, it works flawlessly with Beaver Builder and Elementor, which are the two best known builders, visual builders out there. So that's huge. Uh, you don't have to do anything to make it work with those two plugins. It's also incredibly fast and reliable. So does it have a free trial? Yep. Uh, and it only costs $40 for the entire year, and that's all the premium versions of it. The premium versions add on uh, color customizations, extra, a whole bunch of menu options, headers, and all these other things. But basically, you can get the free version and play with it from the WordPress repo. And that's the next question. It's right there on the WordPress repo. Um, is it functional? Yeah. This is our Tampa Bay WordPress website. It's built on Generate Press. I flipped it to 2017. All my content's there, my menu's there, my widgets are there, everything works exactly right. Uh, it focuses primarily on front end. It has seamless integration, like I said, with Beaver Builder and Elementor. So you can use any visual builder, or those two visual builders, because those are the only ones available on the WordPress repo <laughs> for free. And do a visual built website if you want to, and play with those. Uh, GP Premium provides complete flexibility for headers, mega menus, layout, sliders, colors, and more. It also has, uh, once you've designed a base site that you like or a base design that you work with with most of your sites, you can do a one-click export and a one-click import into your new site. So I love it. Support? Absolutely excellent documentation. Uh, has a support <laughs> forum that the man responds to within a day or less, sometimes within an hour. Uh, Tom Osborne, the developer, is incredibly friendly, very responsive, has a cute kid, dogs, the whole bit. He's very nice. He's on lots of podcasts. His community of developers and designers and folks that he works with is huge, and they're all incredibly helpful. So if you do that one, you're not going to get lost. So to me, it's a winner. Okay. So I'm going to do one more slide, and then we'll get into talking about you guys' websites and themes. Builders versus themes. Yeah, Susie, go ahead. Generate press. Generate press. Yeah. Generate press. Yeah. So builders versus themes. Um, builders provide front end design and drag with drag and drop and no code. That means you don't need to know PHP, you don't need to know HTML, you don't need to know cascading style sheets. You don't need to know anything. You just drag a module in, you put your type, your content, you change the colors with some sort of a menu thingy, and you do what you want. You build an entire site and you let the builder handle it on the back end. That's Beaver Builder and Elementor are the best ones at that. Uh, Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer are the ones I tend to recommend. Uh, I haven't played with Elementor a lot, but I know it's quite good too. Divi Builder's listed here. I'm never ever going to recommend Divi Builder because again, it's it's basically thumping a gigantic short codes into your content box. Yeah. Between Beaver Builder and Elementor, is one like more e-commerce, one's more. Video no, they're stream. pretty much both. Uh, Elementor is. There's a thing that, uh, okay. They all have support for WooCommerce because WooCommerce is a huge product. Uh, Beaver Builder also has support for uh, electronic digital downloads, the event calendar, ACF, and a couple of other big plugins. They have support for pods. Uh, Beaver Themer, that little over there to the side. Builder basically allows you to create like a visual layout, but you're lay laying out every single page which means if I have a blog page and I just want my content to plop in the middle and I want everything else to look normal, I need to lay out every single page. Themer fixes that. 
Themer allows you to fix a template for your blog posts, for your single product pages, for your product archives, for your product categories. Maybe you've got like an entire like layout that you want for your e-commerce, you know, product, I don't know, <laughs> your shopping cart, the whole bit. Themer, the Beaver Themer basically allows you to apply a WordPress-like theme hierarchy to Beaver Builder. So that's the reason I recommend it more than I recommend Elementor. But Elementor 2.0 just came out, and supposedly they've added that, but I haven't had a chance to test it because, of course, it's premium, and I can't test them all. Uh, Divi Builder does not support any kind of like theme layout whatsoever. You're building every single page. If you're fine, if you're building a site that's only like six or seven or 12 pages, that's great, fine. No problem with that. If you're building a directory site, I would never do that. Uh, if you're wow. building, because you have to build every single page of that directory. Who said that he said why? <laughs> you said why, yeah, that's why. If you have to, if you're building a directory site, that means you're creating a list of people. You click the person's name and you have to go to their page. Right. Divi Builder has no way to create a template for the single person or the directory archive. That means you have to create every version of that directory and the subpage. A lot of work. That's a lot of work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, the other thing I'd say on, on, on builders is to avoid anything that does short code itis. Because if you, basically, if you saw that one page I showed you with the 17,000, you know, sub, sub nested short codes and crap like that, I wouldn't want to troubleshoot that. If I look at that a year later and that's what I've got to troubleshoot, I'm gonna, my brain's gonna blow up. I, I don't want to have to do that. I want a builder that's gonna basically build the site and, and be built and still, and preserve my content. Does it provide a free or a trial version? Beaver Builder and Elementor do. Nobody else does. That's a huge one on visual builders for me. Uh, and both of those, Beaver Builders and Elementor's free builders are both on the WordPress.org plugin repository, as is Ultimate Add-ons and PowerPack Add-ons and some of the other ones that work with both of them. Uh, that is the only reason I built an entire site with the free version of Beaver Builder and some free versions of like Power Pack and Ultimate Add-ons just to play with them to see what they look like and how they worked. And they do great. I mean, I'll, I'm going to show you guys a demo, a version of that. Uh, do they support save layouts and work with custom post types? If they do, yes. If they don't, no. You do not want to design something and then have to replicate that entire design by scratch on every page. That's stupid. You want to be able to create a design for your products and be able to have, apply that product design to every single product and then maybe be able to like create a couple of options based on different kinds of products. But yeah, that's a very critical thing. You don't want to go onto a website and have to have to paint every single page. If they're all painted the same, you know, if all of your products need to look the same way, why would you want to repaint them every single time you go to a new product page? That's, that's bad design. So that's the whole reason you buy a theme, so that you don't have to do that. So. There's too much here in the whole builder world for us to discuss this in under an hour. So unfortunately, Jen's not here, but we do have someone that wanted to do a talk on Beaver Builder, and we'll probably bring that back and actually do an entire meetup just on Beaver Builder and Elementor, but it's not gonna be tonight. Okay, before we do this, I'll show you guys a quick demo of a site I built with Beaver Builder, the free version. Um, this entire site was built with Generate Press and Beaver Builder. All I did in Generate Press was turn off the menu at the top because she wanted a landing page. So all it is is a landing page. It's a marketing page. You send out an email, it goes to this page, you get your little learn more and scroll down. You know, it's got all of its little background, all the details. It's fully responsive. Um, it just works. It looks great. And I built it in under two hours with Beaver Builder and with the free version of Beaver Builder. So that's what you can do with Beaver Builder. Um, this site was built with Divi in a day. And it looks gorgeous. I mean, yeah, shit, it looks beautiful. <laughs> it's parallax, it has animated icons. I mean, you know, and this is like D B Divi, Divi 
two, I'm sorry, this is Divi 2.0, so this is like 2.1 or 2.7. I've never upgraded it, but it still works. Um, it's responsive, it's clean, it's attractive, lots of parallax, stunning sight, but it's stuck on Divi. Um, it's stuck on Divi. I'll never be able to change it, or I'll have to like recreate a completely new site. I have to, I have to rebuild it from scratch. That's the problem when you do a Divi site. That's all Divi. That's all Divi. So if I want to change this design, I'm either going to have to change it in Divi, or if I don't want, I didn't want to upgrade Divi, and I'm never going to upgrade Divi. So that's Divi 2.5, 2.6, 2.7. It doesn't have the Divi Builder because the Divi Builder didn't exist then. Um, but if I want to change the design of this site beyond what I've got here, or if I want to build beyond this site and build a much more complicated site, which is what the next version of this needs to be, it can't be in Divi anymore. So I have to build it from scratch. So. That's kind of those. I think I've got one more up here. Oh, this was uh, before we get into the theme stuff. If you do want to get into theme development, underscores.me, which is that little link up there. It's very hard to read. I'll make sure I add it to the slides at the end for resources. Underscores.me creates a WordPress theme with a cascading style sheet. You can also tell it to give you um, SAS if you want it. Yeah. So you can type in all these little settings. You can tell it to give me Woo WooCommerce boilerplate and a Sassify, which Sassify just means using some complicated extra stuff, <laughs> which I'm not going to talk about. It's developer stuff. But it'll give you all of your base theme pieces and allow you to create a style sheet to decorate it and make it look good. And it'll do all the product pages. It'll do all the product single product pages. It'll do everything. And I'll add the shopping cart, the My Account, everything. And it'll work with your WooCommerce site. It'll be hideous as hell. Uh, actually, you know what? We'll create it and we will, let's say, we'll have it put it on my desktop and I'll just apply it to a theme and you'll see how ugly it is. <laughs> Come on, mouse. You're acting really weird today. All right, desktop. Okay. Get a new battery. No, it's not that. This was actually, this one charges by, so if I add a new theme and I go in and I upload, uh, choose file from desktop. Desktop. <coughs> you know, and Sammy. Open. Install now. Is that free? Yeah, underscores is free. Yeah, it's right. designed by the people that write all the WordPress stuff. So if I do a live preview right now of my current website. Oh my god! I mean, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be much more, much more ugly than this. But, I mean, my menu is basically an unordered list that just stacks out like that. It's not a pretty site by any means. It's a, uh, and this is, <coughs> I've installed the, the theme testers kit. So basically there's an import at WordPress that allows you to punch into your website an entire thing to test out theme development and design. And that's what I plugged in here. And I mean, it's ugly. It is like, I mean, it, it still does this part, which is kind of nice, I guess, but you know, it's not a usable site, not by any means. It's quite hideous. But that's, you know, it, it gives you a starting point to work with if you want to just play with the style sheets and go from there. So, and it even gives you a very nicely table of contents set up for your style sheet so that you can really, you know, go through and set it. I've used it before. So my big question was now, what themes do you love? I've talked about three. Um, uh, what sites would you guys actually like? Well, what themes do you would you like us to talk about tonight? That's where we are now. So deliberately went through it that quickly so that we had enough time to talk about your what themes. What about the free ones? Because a lot of people will dabble and there's free ones. So before committing or any of that, look, a free product one that you want to sell. Well, I mean, Astra is a very good theme. Someone has talked about that one. Um, it is on the WordPress repo. Actually, it's not installed. So I have I've to... also heard that 2017 is pretty good. Well, 2017 is the built-in one. Yeah. Um, it's not that great. <laughs> no. Uh, I, this is my viewpoint on it. The folks that work at WordPress that design the themes for the, the releases, the big numbered releases, um, have never worked in the business ever. So they're getting their start. No, they've just, they have, have a, the perspective. they have the thought, they think they know what a business is looking for. They have no, they have no clue. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean when I say that, but when you ask them, why aren't you including a contact form, a basic contact form inside WordPress? Well, we got it in Jetpack. 
why aren't you including right. it in WordPress itself? Yeah. You've got Jetpack. Plug That's in. their answer. That's a plugin, right? Yeah. And it's a huge plugin. <laughs> it's an enormous plugin. Um, I'm sorry, but no, I don't think the theme should be doing work, should be doing a contact form, but they should have at least a basic contact form that's built into WordPress core. That's a big issue I have, is that form management, form handling is not built into WordPress at all, except for the con comments. So I've seriously considered Astra agency. Well, Astra, a lot of people like Astra. I mean, I... As far as it goes, like right now, it has a free version, it has a premium version. The free version, I just installed it, and I'm going to go look at it right now. Let me, let's go look at it now. Let's see. It should be on my desktop. Let's see. Is that Astra? No, oh, hang on. Customize. Uh, themes. Nope, it is Astra. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it went in, and it looks pretty good. I can do, you know, all the major things. I can change the backgrounds and, you know, change base colors. So, I mean, it's got, let's see, it even has transparency, so I mean, it has a lot of the cut capabilities <coughs> built in and they're all right there. So, it's got secondary and primary navigation, it has full widget control, and it's got a main sidebar, that's all it's got with the free, with the free version. So, I do know that Astro works with Beaver Builder, so, but other than that, I mean, I also know it has good support. Yes. How can you tell which themes will work with, with, with Beaver Builder or Elementor? They'll tell you. They'll tell you. Yeah, okay. they'll tell you that they make that as a selling point. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Beaver Builder. If you go to Beaver Builder, they'll tell you which themes they've rated okay. as well. So that's a big one. So. Um, they also have a lot of free templates too, and Astro. Uh, yeah. As well as Elementor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Elementor again, that's the builder. Builder. That's right. not your theme. Right. And Beaver Builder is, a, is a, the builder. Right. It's not the theme. Right. So that's a big thing to keep track of. So, um, but do you guys have any themes or websites? Yeah, go ahead. I had a question about 2017. I was uh, using that to kind of just play around. Yeah. Um, one of the things that that I found maybe can help me out with it is that it's the images. I guess are too too big. Yeah. And it's slow. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. That was uh, the talk that John did two weeks ago. It's on the we t we t we videotaped it, but he talked about how to optimize images. Do that. Compressing. Yeah, that's that's all you really got to do is go lossless compression and boom, done. Yeah, it'll make them download much faster. So yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. Yes, you have to use big images. Yes, you have to use big videos. Host your video at YouTube or Vimeo. Set the settings right. Do the whole. I mean, the video doesn't have to look good. It just has to be you know. <laughs> it has to look good, edited wise, but it doesn't have to be amazing. So, yeah, that's the kind of the thing. With all of those kind of stuff, the big gigantic hero images, most of them are all out of focus anyway. They all have like a Gaussian blur or motion blur over them anyhow, so that the tech can be read. So, typically, the picture doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to look good at all. It just has to be big. <laughs> so, that's kind of that. Um, I mean, I, my website is on 2016, I think, and I used it just because I liked it. <laughs> you know, it was uh, it had a menu right there which I liked. It was clean and straightforward. It had my social icons down here. I liked it. Didn't bother me any. Um, we used General, well, I built the website for WordPress.org, but I did it just in Generate Press just because I liked it too. It was easy to do. We had a branding style we already had, you know, configured. So I liked that I was able to very easily, you know, configure that whole idea of like the color swapping, but still keeping the same background on the back, all that kind of thing. Um, it just works. It has like the big gigantic header images and stuff. So. And that's a big thing now. Most people are all just doing gigantic header images. If you've got a theme that does the gigantic big header images, you're done. <laughs> if it supports uh, columns, you're done. You know, and that's kind of the thing. It's like you don't really have to work that hard to have a great website. Uh, I do a, I dun do Dungeons and Dragons on Sundays at a comic book store over in, or a gaming store in in St. Pete, and I created a site to track my. Uh, the upcoming games and you know I did the whole thing in generate press and I did it primarily because I could do gigantic images that looked really good you know and go into resources and I've got big gigantic header images with the title in the middle 
you know, it looks, it's a great clean site. There's nothing special about it, but it works. I can, you know, it has, like I said, it handles the parallax backgrounds, header backgrounds, which everybody's looking for. Um, that was not what I wanted to click on. What I want to click on. Here, there we go. It does like uh, the big thumbnails. Yeah. Yeah, big gigantic thumbnails, the read mores. All of this is built into Generate Press. All I had to do was set the colors and the font, and I was done. You know, pretty much that was it. And, you know, all of this. Like, the, even these huge full page. Huh? Hero pages. Yeah, the hero pages. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, the big hero pages, gigantic, but also look good at mobile size. Uh, Generate Press allows you to actually create like a template header that you use on all your blog pages and it pulls the featured image in for the back. It pulls the title in where you want it. You can put authors and all your little, you know, categories, all your meta right there. It's pretty pretty straightforward. And uh and that oh. generate press has the transparent headers too? Yeah. Yeah. It does the menu like that? Yep. Okay. Yep. That was no that's generate press it's premium. Perfect. That's the forty dollar one. Yes, that's the forty dollar one, but I mean it was worth it. <laughs> and I can uh, once a year. Once a year. Yeah. So if you have that, can you make as many websites as you want? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so you can make websites for clients for mm -hmm. free without charging them more for it. Yeah. Or you can have them buy the license, it doesn't matter, but it's up to you on how you want to do that. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean that's kinda of how that works. I like it because I can build sites quickly that look good. Most of my clients, that's what they're looking for, are gigantic hero images, clean typography, responsive, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, go ahead. Question. So say if I was just surfing on, surfing on a website and I saw this and I like this theme, is there a way to see what this theme yep. is? Yep. Uh, what's that website, um, Elaine, that you use to find out what theme is running? WP Theme Detector. Doc De WP theme, just, oh, I, I think I just did it. Theme, I can't read my type. I, I got it. Yeah, that's it. WPThemeDetector.com. So I can go to, let's see. Come on, guy. Catch up. <laughs> so I type in a website. Now, I've gotten so good that I can recognize Divi out of the box. I know it's a Divi theme just by looking at it. I can tell. Okay, it's slow. <laughs> Might be having issues with our network, who knows? Okay, oh, there it goes. Generate press, yep. If I type in. I can tell you, keep going down, and I'll show you the plugins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yoast. GP Premium, DP Show Post, Event Tickets, Events Calendar, Jetpack, Easy Twitter, Doesn't Show Pods. <laughs> I wonder why. I don't know. It, Interesting. It tests for a set of plugins. Yeah. To see if they specifically are there. It doesn't generically go out to say what plugins. You yeah. Have. You probably have to do something else for if that. The ones, yeah, so it might test for 50 or 100, then that's it. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. So all the unusual ones won't show up yeah. if they're there or not. Cool. Now, I mean, like I said, Divi, I'll give you that little quick little thing. If I go to, no, it's not Divi.com. What is it? That's Harmonic. That's the other thing. Why in the world do they not have Divi on their own site? <laughs> uh, Divi. There we go. Okay, try it for free. This is a spun off instance on their hosting server. And they have a great little tour. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to start building. But, ah! <laughs> okay. I can click any one of these elements. Um, I think the little gear icon there is the editor. I can go in and change text. Whatever. You know, it's all, ah! It's their little help icon down there. But you can do all of this on their site live. But this is their hosted server, their hosted sessions thing to play with. They still don't have a version that you can test locally. And that's, that's what I would want if I was going to play with that site. So. Okay. Anyone else have any themes that they like? That they like? Yeah, go ahead, Stacey. So I've run my for 20 plus years. Okay. I started when everything had to be hand coded. I gave people to do that. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's cool. Yeah, I've become the part time paper. Yeah. But um, I am going to reference 
to say that you don't have to pay for it to buy free. I'm sorry, if you're running a business, you should be buying premium themes, premium plugins, and paying people to do things. Because otherwise, your website's look like everybody else. Okay? But saying that, the, the things out there, you know, I just pulled up to, um, GP Premium, um, they're cheap. Okay? They're easy to use as anything. I mean, GP Premium's 40 bucks. Yeah, 40 bucks a year. That's a, life, no, that's a lifetime license. Oh, yeah, lifetime license. Okay. If you want the updates the next year, you have to pay again. So yeah. That's what I was going to say. One thing I was going to mention is pay for updates mm -hmm. after the first year. So when you're looking at buying things, look at how much they're updating. Um, I have two he updates things. back practically every month. Right. So I have two premium things. One was bought by a company called Dream Thing. Um, the other one is by AIT Thing. AIT things, um, I've got all the website stuff, but I, they're claiming 105,000 customers and they used to be on Invato uh, Market, yeah. which is where you used to buy all the things, and that's verified. So 105,000 purchased. Can I tell you something, yeah. though? Invato doesn't have a single one of their themes on the WordPress repo. None of these are on there. I was, while you were talking, I was looking at yep. um, So to me, I'd say, you know, I know some of the people that um, they're not coded that, to that, standards. Automatic is what runs WordPress. No, automatic does not run all of WordPress. We have an entire gigantic industry of WordPress developers that run WordPress.org. Separate from automatic is automatic. automatic is one of the primary contributors. Right. But there are over I can't even tell you the number of people that contribute to the core. So why are they reviewing stuff that's on Envato? Because Envato doesn't code to standards. So, and Theme Forest doesn't code to hey, standards. Hey, everything on Envato, you pay for it. Right. right. And they only do stuff that's free. Yep. So, so like the Generate that. Press plugin, I mean, a uh, uh, theme, for example, is on, is on the repository. But the Generate Press Premium is not. Yeah. Yep. Because it's a charged item. They don't put nothing that, that you have to pay for. They are starting to, actually, they have added um, recently, which I thought was very interesting. Um, if you go here on the wordpress.org, let's see, is that plugins? I can't read my things, so I have to look at the menu here. Give me a second. Okay, if I go to themes, ah, my mouse. Come on, mouse. It's loading, I guess it's loading. There it goes. Yeah. They now have commercial themes. These are commercially supported GPL themes. Generate Press is listed here. Generate Press GP Premium is listed here. They're starting to list themes that have a free license and a GPL license and are premium. But you'll notice that Genesis was not listed here. Because, because why? I don't know why. I'm not sure it's, <laughs> I'm not sure it's GPL. That's, I think that's why. I don't think you're likely to find any of the themes on that. Yeah, no, nothing on Envato is going to be GPO. Right, well, so my point is, I, for four years, run a very large directory website. I totally get I mean, I, I totally get that. You're, but you've but, married. But it's not perfect. But you have married yourself to that theme. Not, not the way it's built, because I can download the database, the pages. We have very few static pages. So, okay. Yes, I we rebuild about. 18 static well, I mean, if you buy a professional website and you use a professional theme developer, they're going to design a theme specifically for you. And yes, you're going to pay that theme developer a large chunk of money to support the site and the theme to work for your site. Oh, and that's perfectly fine. We're not doing that. We don't need to. It, okay. Everything is so updated and intuitive and okay. you know, the, the rare time you have to buy plugins. The other thing that we use is very popular out there also. It's called the 7. It's yeah, the 7, I won't go anywhere near. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, that's just, it's, 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 it's just some of them. It's like X is another one that is incredibly popular off of Envato. It is probably like one of the most popular ones there. I won't use it. It's using a forked version of Visual Composer underneath. It includes a ridiculous number of plugins that they have actually forked from the plugin developers and incorporated into their code. And no, I'm not going to do that. So you say fork? That means they've copied the code, created their own version of it, it's no longer supported by the original developer. It's now supposedly supported by X, and that's kind of how they work it. 
there's a, I mean, there's a reason WordPress is what WordPress is. It's open source so that you, I mean, you could basically shoot your, your developer tomorrow or your developer get run over by a bus tomorrow and you can find another WordPress developer over here in an hour that can fix your site. The more you marry yourself into a very specific theme and theme developer that doesn't code by WordPress standards, you lose that. That's why I won't, I mean, I, I have bought in the past, I'm, I'm just going from like 10 years of, this is 10 years of like agency experience of like creating websites for clients and having to do the exact same thing. We just need to, need to go find a gym theme. We need to go find a this theme. We need to go find a that theme. And I've bought them and I've used them and I've ran into the exact same boat where they worked great for three years, then the agency that built the theme went away, never got an update again, done. Not coded by, not coded by standards, so no one could pick it up. WordPress did an update, every single widget broke. WordPress did an update, every single short code broke. Because they didn't code to standards. That's a problem. But that's not necessarily true of every theme. No. Now, I mean, those themes there are purchase themes, but they're not all not standard. Some of them aren't, and you can get burned. Some of them are, and, you know. And, and, but you should be able to get a demo or a trial of that, or at least a, a trial version, hey. one that you can buy and play with on your own and make your decisions based on and look at before you get by, bought into it for good. Yeah, but you still won't know whether or not the developer's going to be around. No, you'll them. never know that, but you can look usually at the support forum on the Envato page, or if they have their own hosted support forum, you can look at that and see how responsive they are to the support questions. And that way, if I bought me a $150 theme, they damn well better have support. And tell us <laughs> how many copies they sold. Yep. Go ahead. Great. Uh, how difficult is it for me to figure out whether this theme is to standard or not? The easiest way, WordPress repo. And so... Is it on there? That's the easiest way. And if it's not on there, you automatically... You need to start questioning. You need to look. And so what would you, how would you look? I'm out of this business. I mean, I'm out of this business. I don't do that side of the world anymore. So I, can, I mean, that's just pretty much it for me when I make a decision. When you ask the developer, yeah. Yeah. Why don't they have a free version on WordPress repo? Or why aren't they? Haven't they gone through WordPress the theme? You know, the theme. Yeah. So can I? Uh, I came from the Shopify side. Where it seems like a lot of the stuff was modular, predefined. Yeah. find the themes I bought, I never. I'm not knew. trying to. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to knock that down by any means because every company, every business has to make a decision. But in every single agency work that I did, I had to make sure that if I got hit by a bus the next day, my client was supported to WordPress standards because that was what I put in my contract. Okay. You're a client. I mean, you are a client. You're a business that went out and bought something for your website, for your business, and your entire business depends on your website, correct? No. <clears throat> uh, well, one does. The other one does not. Okay, but your directory site does. Yeah. Okay. That entire business depends on that site being functional, knowing that when WordPress kicks out an update, it's not going to break instantly. When this huge GPDR thing comes flying through, it's not going to break them instantly. All of that kind of stuff. Well, it's not even, I mean, yeah, that you have to do the standard maintenance stuff, but that's what I'm saying is, is that when you buy something and you purchase a contract or you hire a developer to do it, you have to make sure that those particular things are hit if that matters to you because you're on WordPress. You're not on Drupal. You're not on Joomla. You're on WordPress. You want to be able to find a developer that can fix something that you need if it's not something you can handle tomorrow. And that's why I say WordPress standards has to be part of it. But that's me. And that's what I did in my contracts. And that's why I put it there. That's, a, that's why we're on a GPL WordPress thing. I've developed a theme specifically for you, and that's my intellectual property for, that I have designed for you. But I could get hit by a bus tomorrow, and you will not lose support. You can hire a theme developer. You can walk out the door tomorrow and find a WordPress developer tomorrow, probably standing around the corner from you. 
So to that point. Sorry, uh, Susie had a question first. My, I'm just wondering, you had said before that you can go back to the um, uh, March 1st meeting and get the video. Where do you find the? Oh, uh, Tampa Bay WordPress dot org. There's a link at the very top that says videos. Because I'm on, I'm on the meetup. Yeah, not the meetup. Tampa Bay WP dot org. I also, every single meetup that I've done, if it's got that, if it's that meetup that you're looking for, in the comments below, there'll be a link for the video and the slides. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Sam, where's your question? Yeah, uh, I was going to ask about how hard it is to find developers because I'm getting to the stage where I need to hop on the WordPress fake Facebook group. Every WordPress, single WordPress Facebook group. Facebook. Drop a message in the discussions board on the meetup. Say I'm looking for a developer. WordPress Facebook group. It's on the Tampa Bay WordPress.org website. There's a link at the top that so has a little Facebook icon. Click that. It's also listed on our frequently asked questions. Cool. So, uh, our meetup group, WordPress St. Petersburg, there's a place down there called Discussions. Drop a new discussion and say you're looking for something for work. You're looking for a developer. Um, the Upwork.com Upwork, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm uh, there's somebody. also another one, too. I can't think who the group is, but it's... They're a little more better rated. Codable is a good place. Codable.io, codeable.io is a really good place, but that's going to be, you know, might not be local. Yeah. You know, if you need I a local, local if you want a local developer, go to our Tampa yeah. Bay WordPress.org, go to the local. Facebook group, yeah. join it, ask on there. Okay. How bad is cyber chips? Cyber chips? What's that? Is it a theme? Let's find out. <laughs> How bad is it? <laughs> That's the way to ask the question. Moto theme, best marketing WordPress theme. Okay. All right. Let's do our test. Does it have a free or trial version? Let's see. Feature details. Oh, hang on, zoom in. Sorry, right, I can't see. I like that. <laughs> I'm with you, man. Yeah, it's like, ugh. This. Right strain. Come on, it's a nineteen dollars. That's okay. Uh, free. Thirty-day money back. Thirty-day money back guarantee. I uh, know there's a plug. -in. Oh, that's not. Cyberchimps is the. We were looking at the. Are you were talking about the Moto thing? The Cyberchimps no. looks like the company. There's another one. Um, Parallax. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Par well, Parallax yeah. is Parallax is a term, but they have a yeah. thing called Parallax. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Ah, come on, man. I'll stop that. Uh, themes. There we go. Come on, mouse. Get over there. It's not acting weird today. That's because I've got two mice installed at the moment. So it's they're both of them are jumping on top of each other. Uh, Urban Grill, Jane and Joe. Let's see what we've got here. We have one page business, responsive business, responsive pro. They have demos, positive vibes. Was there a specific one here? Moto Bootstrap. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> so many themes, people. Good. Well, that's, I mean, that's just they're putting it. The name of the theme is iFeature Pro. Yeah. It was literally, it was Parallax. It was actually called Parallax. Yeah. Should have type it in the search. There we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. New details. All right. Best Parallax WordPress theme. Buy it for $27. I just Pro version. I got to Okay, so if I go to the WordPress, theme WordPress.org. Ah, <coughs> Hang on, I'll make my life easier. All right, change. Search themes. Oh, WordPress.org themes, there we go. You knew this was in there, right? <laughs> Let's see. It doesn't look like they've got the one from Cyberchimp, but they have a lot of parallax themes. I mean, this could be the one from Cyberchimp. Let's see. Yep, that's it. So they do have a free version on the WordPress.org repo, so that's a good sign. We can look at it now. Um, install and preview. But you did that search from within? From inside the customizer. I click themes, change. And then it had, you know, my installed themes, and right below it was another little link for WordPress.org themes, and that allowed me to search for other themes. And then I was able to like install it and preview it. <coughs> what was your search keyword again? 
uh, I used Parallax, which was the name of the theme. So it's while it's installing. So yeah, that's that's a new feature in the theme thing inside WordPress now. So like I'm previewing the theme Parallax. See, that works. <coughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I mean, it didn't break my site when I installed it, but I mean, I could now go in here and like you know do all the I don't know. I imagine you've got to have like something special on the home page to do that big gigantic parallax image or something. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Put yeah. Okay. So I mean, yeah. Uh, so let's activate and publish. So I had found that a bunch of years ago, and I um, used it for my son's website. Okay. Um, more than likely, it's, it's got a it's, edit page. It's still on it, but I. They more than likely have a. They more than likely have a. Let's see. No, that's parents. Where's the? Did you create a child theme of this? Yeah. Oh. So they actually have a theme options thing on the actual page. Is what they do. So okay. it's interesting. <clears throat> I'm not gonna spend a lot of time learning how to do this. So no, that's not my. Yeah. I mean, there's the two that were down. Free version on the repo. Um, I was able to look at my site and it didn't break it. So yeah, that's a good thing. Three. Uh, the other two you got to find out are basically: is it focused on front end layout? Can you do what you need to do? And does it have good support? So. Mm -hmm. So far, I I had to. I mean, looking at the demo. About something or another, and I got I got a response. I mean, for me, demo wise, let's see. I can zoom in and out. It's responsive. Is it is it truly responsive? Can I? That's a big test there. You know, look and see what happens when you different you know sizes. Always <laughs> test that good stuff. Um, you know, when they do the demos, their demos are designed to show off their thing. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. And all their little yeah, all their configurations are done exactly the way they want you to do them. So yeah. I got a big question. Sure, Sam. Go how, do, how do you know when you need to go custom versus a thing? Depends on the needs. Like for me, for most of my clients, I mean, we started with a theme, and honestly, uh, most of my bigger clients, they were mostly concerned in imagery. And most of their design, the work they needed done, was function versus form. So most of the, uh, most of the work I did for them was on the back end. It was on custom post types and taxonomies and stuff like that. That typically is going to require a developer. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how that works. Did you have a question, Stephen? Uh, or Jim? Uh, primarily because they don't keep control of their code and it's short and it does a lot too much short codes. Everything that they drop in the content block is short codes. If you look at a page and you've built it in Visual Composer and you flip to another theme. If your content box is filled with short codes, no. <laughs> because that means if you turn off Visual Composer, if you change the theme, it breaks your site completely. There's absolutely no way that you're going to get out of that without completely redoing your site. That's big to me. So, yeah. so a good page builder converts in, it into a real code instead of short code? Well, I mean, I honestly, I have no clue what Beaver Builder does on the back end, but I know they don't do short code itis. So. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Um, are there some things that work better for some businesses than others? Well, and that's a big thing you've got to look at there. If you're buying a theme just because it's specific for a business, that's right off the bat, you're blending form and function. That means you're buying a theme to supply a function. I mean, it's okay to buy a restaurant theme for a restaurant. It's perfectly okay to do that because you know you need to have menu management and but I mean honestly a restaurant has needs four things a map the phone number the hours and a menu that's the only four things a, menu, a restaurant website needs so then your theme becomes more functional than yeah okay. yeah cuz I mean that's when you look at it a restaurant theme has to be able to be completely mobile to the point that if I look at that website on my phone, I can easily click the phone number, see the hours, see the menu right there, or reserve a table if I want to. And that reserving a table is open table or something else like that. That's function. That's not form. And that's... Well, the themes are more for form. Yeah, design, layout, 
what it looks like, how it works. Yeah. And I mean, a lot, that's the problem I have when themes cross the line. Because when they're doing that, that's more of a custom thing. Like, am I buying a directory site? Because a directory site, I mean, there's perfectly valid reason to buy a, a, a custom theme. Because it's, you know, it, it does directory work. And they have 40 versions of the directory. Yep. 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 And that's perfectly okay, as long as you can customize it and not look like the other 70 of them. <laughs> you know, that's a big one. So, and as long as you can also change the theme down the road and not break the whole thing. Uh, no. I can change tampabaywordpress.org a million times over, and I don't lose any of the functionality. All of my event calendar, all of my custom post types. I'm using pods for my custom post types and content management because I don't have to worry about the theme. It's completely theme ignorant. Uh, it works in any theme. So <coughs> I'm using the event calendar for the same reason. And that's pretty much it. Yoast for my SEO. Um, that's it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I have a theme that I married. And <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking for a divorce? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't um, No, I, I come here for uh, like you know to learn things and I've learned a whole lot and this this is really good stuff by the way. Okay, um, thank you. And uh, like I didn't wasn't never really been concerned about like the repository and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of people don't, but I mean we're a WordPress meetup. I am under the WordPress chapter and. It's kind of like how it goes. I speak to GPL standards. Yeah. I speak to WordPress standards. This is not a Drupal. This is not a Joomla. This is not anything else like that. So I'm going to be WordPress. So, so uh, my thing is Info. Is which one? Info. I've never heard of it. So. It's, uh, it's, on, well, it's on Envato. OK. It's, a, it's for the last uh, several years, it's been on like the top three or four or whatever. OK. Right, right next to seven and X or whatever. Yeah. Um, it has its own builder, um, so it's going to have a lot of short codes. It's going to have. A lot is it of infold like E N F O L D? Yeah. Okay. Responsive um, multi-purpose theme by Crazy on Theme Forest. Okay. It's also on Envato, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the great thing about this is it's got a ton. Of, well, first off, it has great support. Okay. And it has a, a lot of different moderators and, and, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, that you know, they'll answer you within 24 hours usually, um, and. Uh, it's got a lot of demos, like a ton of them, and uh, same thing as X kind of, and you can you can kind of you could um, just install the demo, mm -hmm. and if you're not a very good designer or whatever, you, all you gotta do is like, switch out the images, yep. switch out the text, and you yep. have a very broken website. Divi does that too. Yep, but you're you're married to it. I am married to it, and I've, I've done a ton of websites on it. So okay. It better still be there. Well, then that means that that means that all of your clients are also married to it. Exactly. Yeah. It is. That's, a, that's very true. And it also means that now, are you when you're using a builder? That's kind of the thing now. When you're using a builder, does that mean the client updates their own content? Um, I am going to update the content. I want to update the content because I charge. Okay. There's a reason it's called a content management system. <laughs> I mean, honestly, there is. For I mean, from a from a business perspective, yeah. the reason that we sell content management systems to clients yeah. is so that they enter the content yeah. and they don't give a damn about design because you've handled that. Yeah, and I've done that plenty of times. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll teach them you know, how, how to use the, the builder. Yeah. And usually they're able to only to switch out uh, basic stuff, basic yeah. text. Yeah, you know, but like, when I'm calling it from like a directory, yeah. I mean, granted, I think most of your directory fuel, they actually fill out a form and then they put the directory in, right? Or there's a front end form that they're filling out or completing. Uh, your directory folks, the folks that are in the directory, do you update the directory or do they update it? We update it. Okay. They, they can send the information to Okay. Like, Elaine's got a site that she did that is um, a yoga directory statewide. And <clears throat> they fill out a form and they pay a subscription fee and they fill out a directory entry and that directory entries are tied to their account name and when they don't pay their you know their directory entries are moved but all of the content is just wordpress backend or it's a one form to edit it so and that's kind of the thing is like <clears throat> i don't want to do content management for clients that's not my job my job is to 
build an incredible website with a lot of functionality and not have to do data entry because I get paid too much you to were do. Talking it. about content, and he was talking about design. Yeah. You know, no, he said he like. Taught, he, said he, he taught a couple of them how to use the builder. Yeah. And that's not what you're talking about. No, yes, I am. Henry, because he's built the the site is built. It's all built. I don't want him to. I don't want him to. Yeah. No, I. Well, I mean that's just it though. Okay. If they want to add another post, they don't need to come to you, right? You just add a post. Yeah. I mean. Can they add blog posts? No, no. What I mean is. Did you design it so that they would, on, in the normal course of business, um, add posts to their to their blog? Um, yeah, or do they, you know, they, they don't even come to you. They can they design, can they edit their about page? Also, the blog is really easy. You know, yeah. if a blog post is different than you know. Like yeah. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, that's what's but John, some of those some of those themes don't allow you to even do that. That's what I'm talking about. Some of them you have to build everything, like. Your about page. Can they go in to edit the about page, like the staff page and stuff like that? Can they do any of those? Yeah, I mean, as long as it's like basic tech stuff or whatever, if it's good, if they're, if they're wanting to put a video in or something. Or what if they're wanting to add a staff member or something of that nature? Like if you've got a staff grid that you've built in the builder and you've got like little images of the staff members and they've got their little bios and all that kind of stuff, do they have to go in the builder to edit that? Um, yeah, they would have to do that. Yeah. Okay, that's a problem. Yeah. That's a that's crossing the line between content and design. Right, and that's a very good point, though. But my what, what I'm saying is, I don't want to. I'm there for. for oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's in your maintenance contract, though. Exactly. Exactly. But if you get hit by a bus tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to take all that over. Then they're gonna look and go, okay, I need to find someone that is an infold developer. Not a WordPress developer. Well, well, most customers wouldn't know that. Yes. Right. They'd go look for a WordPress or, developer, and then some so WordPress developer is going to come along and go, the hell's this shit? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Or they're going to go like Divi. They'll, they'll know Divi because you'll find a Divi WordPress guy, <clears> and that's what they'll do. Right. But that's kind of what you run into anytime that you marry a specific theme is that you're going outside of the WordPress standards if it's not on encoded to WordPress standards. That's what I mean basically by that concept. So go ahead. So I bought a special theme. And I've got a, I mean, we're, let me make sure. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and it sounds like it's not compatible. It uses Visual Composer. So yeah, Visual Composer. It's just the mere fact that WP Bakery has let go of their license. Yeah. They have let go of control of their product. And you don't know which Visual Composer version you've got anymore. Yeah. So, so I specifically bought it to work with uh, WC vendors. Like okay. WooCommerce vendors. How can I find one that would work with that better? With work WC vendors? Yeah. What is WC vendors? Is it on the repo okay, so or is it a... WooCommerce, it's a new WooCommerce um, option to make like a social marketplace. Okay. Never heard of it. It's really cool. Yeah. Well, ideally. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Heard of that one, Ocean WP Generate Press. Oh, okay. There you go. All I did was search for WC vendors thing compatible. Okay. Okay. I got one that I'm building at a. Uh, five minutes. <laughs> Because we are going to go after this. so yeah. I do, I'm building a directory website and it's called uh, Listing Pro. Never heard of it. Yeah, it's a new one on, well, not, not so new. They've sold a lot of copies of it. Uh, my concern, though, is, is, it, is that it's, uh, I believe it's based on the, on the visual. Composer? Yeah. Honestly, I can't tell you. I mean, I know it's on Envato. Yeah. Um, you see, it's sold to quite a few copies. That's not a lot of copies. <laughs> well, I mean, since they've been around. Yeah, but they're still kind of new. Yeah, boot, yeah, Visual Composer, multiple different versions of it. Bootstrap, Bootstrap, yeah. And, and my concern is that you know, 
Because once you get going and get a lot of people, it's like you want to kind of like stop. Yeah, I mean, you have to make those decisions, like I said. I mean, you've heard my five-point checklist. That's mine. You have to make your decision based on what you need to make your decision on. I can't control that kind of stuff. So for me, the mere fact that it's on Theme Forest, I would never even look at it again. But that's me. Mm-hmm. Okay? What else? I'm not, that, it's on Theme Forest and Envato. I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> Period. That's me. That I will never buy a theme or plug-in from Theme Forest or Envato. Why? Because they are not tested by WordPress standards. They're not reviewed by the plugin repo. They're not reviewed by the theme repo. And I'm a WordPress developer. Anything I do for my clients has to be supported by WordPress developers. I am not going to put myself in a situation of putting my client in a bad spot. Mm-hmm. And that's me. Yeah. That's okay? Sense. That's that's what I do for a living. So. so is that what this theme is in your view? It's on Theme Forest. It's on Vodka. It's not on WordPress re- theme repo. It doesn't have a free version on the WordPress re- theme repo. It doesn't have a free version on the plugin repo. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's my checklist. Okay? Gotcha. And I, I'm not trying to be mean about this, but it's like... I don't teach themes. It's not my world anymore. I used to do this for a living, but I don't. But when it comes down to it, I, I have no filter when it comes to this stuff. I'm just going to tell you like it is. It's like I will never buy a theme from Envato. I will never buy a theme from Theme Forest. I have been burned by both of them. Over 10 years of working with both Envato and working with Theme Forest, I have been burned by their marketplace. And I will never go back to them again. So does it mean that all their things uh, conform to that, or you don't? You just saying some enough? Not gonna go there. <laughs> There's a reason they don't go to WordCamps. There's a reason they don't support WordPress. There's a reason they don't go. They don't contribute to the core. They don't contribute to WordPress.org. They don't support WordPress camp WordCamps. They don't support WooCamp Commerce Camps. They don't support anything to do with WordPress. Hmm. That's a problem. No. Mm-hmm. That's me. You have to make your own decision. <laughs> well, okay. Does Generate Press go to WordCamps? Yeah, they support WordPress. Okay. Yeah. But buying them out of WordCamps. They're at London this weekend. Okay. <laughs> so we've gone over the questions. We'll go there now. Uh, you can get the slides and the video on Tampa Bay WordPress.org meetup slash St. Petersburg downtown. If you go to Tampa Bay WordPress.org on the side, there's a list of all of our meetups. Uh, this meetup is in the little calendar on the right and click it too. On our Facebook, I'll post it tomorrow. There'll be a Facebook message that has the slides and the video. And on the meetup website for this particular calendar item, they'll also be published there too. They'll be published by Friday. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you. Thank you.